Recognizing member from North Coast. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, really happy that um, I get to speak today on Bill 41, uh, implementing the rights of Indigenous people in British Columbia. I would, I would love to speak for a long time, but I'm going to keep my remarks very short. Um, a lot of my colleagues have covered uh, a lot of what I would, I would say. Um, but I do want to just acknowledge this special time uh, as a MLA, a representative of 11 distinct nations within the North Coast and also including a large population of Niska members. More, 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 live in, more Niska live in Prince Rupert than in their, in their traditional territories in the Nass Valley. So I do have the honour of representing really diverse and interesting uh, people. It's an important day for uh, my constituents as well as, as myself. Um, this is a historic first. We're going to be the first province in Canada to uh, implement the UN Decora Declaration into action, recognizing the rights of Indigenous people. And um, we're, we're moving in a clear path forward that uh, will create good jobs and opportunities for everyone. Um, at the same time, we'll be protecting the rights of Indigenous people and the environment. Um, some of, you know, together we're uh, creating a clear and transparent process for ensuring Indigenous peoples are included in the decisions that affect them directly, that affect their, right, their rights within their own territories. These are inherent rights that are protected in Canada's constitution and recognized in court decision after court decision, but somehow, uh, subsequently, colonial governments such as ourselves, the government that I represent, have time and time again have ignored um, some of BC's biggest employers are already doing things differently with Indigenous peoples and I wanted to um, just recognize that in my own hometown, the Port of Prince Rupert, uh, they have already uh, adopted the principles of UNDRIP whether they intended to or not. Uh, in Prince Rupert, we have successful Indigenous businesses that are thriving and numerous Indigenous people that are employed with good paying jobs, family supporting jobs, and in part that is due to the work, the progressive forward thinking work that the Port of Prince Rupert has already conducted with and how they relate with Indigenous peoples that their port operations operate on in their territories. Um, what I really wanted to do, and I have a couple of minutes, was I just wanted to share a letter that every MLA received on both sides of the house. I'm not going to identify the person, but it actually, the questions I think are some of the questions that a lot of people are thinking, that people are concerned about. And the first question was, you know, and the, I mean, the subject line is, um, the subject line reads, you know, opposition to UNDRIP le legislation. So the first question was, why not just have a declaration for all people instead of just Indigenous people? The, the United Nations doesn't always get it right, and that is true. But um, wh what I wanted to just point out was the irony of some of these questions, and that is that all people, we do all have, in theory, equal rights in British Columbia, but time and time again, Indigenous rights have been ignored. And not only have Indigenous people been ignored, um, they've been mistreated and abused. What's, why, would, why should one group of people be singled out for re what really amounts to special treatment? And I just wanted to point out the irony of that, in that we're all supposed to be treated equally, but for years, for 160 years, white people and non-Indigenous people have been singled out and treated differently. They've been treated uh, special as the uh, superior race. And so uh, what we want to do is uphold the rights of Indigenous people that already are there and, and that already exist. Um, and examples would be that in education, per pupil funding for people on reserve is significantly less than off reserve. We still have Indigenous communities without drinking water, a disproportionate number of Indigenous people incarcerated, the child poverty rate. So what we're doing is trying to make this legislation um, essentially uphold what's already there and make what's right. We, need to, we don't need to have a conversation about who has rights. They already exist. We've been ignoring Indigenous ones. We've been trampling on them. And this legislation sets the path right. Thank you.